Hello and welcome to our Secure Networking Technologies project. We will be showing an SSL strip man in the middle attack on HTTPS. We'll also be showing the mitigation for this where we'll be showing the precautions to stop this attack from happening. Uh, this project is from Connor Hunt, Daly and Terry, Matthew Wayne, Nikunj Namachia and Sanoop Sam. We'll also be showing a short demonstration in the video of how this is working. Here we are just showing the standard login procedure on Amazon.co.uk where it does use HTTPS. As you can see right there, it's HTTPS. If we try and delete the S and just try and make it HTTP that way, it doesn't work as you would expect. So here we'll be using Kali Linux. Um, as you can see, we'll be using this to set up the SSL strip and any ARP spoofing we'll be doing. If you look here, you can see IP forward equals one. That's not always the case. So if you echo one inside the IP underscore forward file, that should forward all packets through our machine on the network to other machines. So we'll be passing network through, um, through the ARP spoofing. As you can see, that has all changed. So the next step is using IP tables. We'll be using NAT to address any um, incoming traffic from the internet from the um, internet port 80 will be listening on and redirecting that to listen port 8080 as you can see here uh, we'll be listening on that port that's we'll be using that later on SSL strip so the next step uh, step is to set up SSL strip and kill the session when we get it listen on port 8080 which I just mentioned and use the hyphen W command to write a log file to our desktop which is in slash root slash desktop snt2.log. So now that's running. We're going to set up, just tail the file anyway, just to see it, that it's, it's running. We can see it in real time when it gets edited, when our victim visits the website, which will be Amazon. Um, just type that in wrong there. Tail F, and that will show our contents real time so the next step is to just set wireshark just so we can see the packets in a much simpler form and just to prove that we've captured the passwords so we'll filter that on http data so we've not bogged down by other packets so arp spoof will use the interface f0 which is what we're on currently on hyphen t the target is 172.31 Point six, and the default gateway we're using is one three one seven two three one point zero point one. Uh, just to check that, we use an N map and just check that the host is up. So, just a simple ping. Point six, it's up. Just to double check, we'll ping it. It's running. Yeah, we've got a response from the host. So the next step is to set up ARP spoof. So the hyphen T target IP one point six, and then the gateway is three one seven two three one point zero point one. And as you can see there, it's showing the ARP spoof packets, saying where our MAC address is. So what we're essentially doing is going to the router and saying, hi, I'm the target. And going to the target and saying to the target that, hey, I'm the router. And that will pass the data to us from the router. And we pass that on to the victim and take off the HTTPS with the SSL strip tool. This is the Windows 7 um, target machine, and here we're showing the IP address to prove it was this machine we attacked, 172.31.16. Open uh, opening up the Google Developer Tools here to show the mitigation later on in the video. Uh, we're going to connect to Amazon.co.uk. Uh, on Amazon.co.uk itself, it doesn't actually say HTTPS. That's because it doesn't do that until you connect to the sign-in page, which we'll do here. And because we're doing the SSL strip attack, it doesn't show the HTTPS. It's stripped that off. And I'm going to put in test at, um, at snt.com and then put the password in as a load of A's in capitals. So it'll be easy to find later on in the video. So here we are in our Kali Linux machine. We have Wireshark on the left where we filtered HTTP data, if anyone remembers. And on the right is our tail of our log file. Now... On the Windows 7 machine, we're logging into Amazon, and we've already got some data coming through showing Amazon. What we want is the post data when the user enters the email address and password and posts that. Unbeknown to them, it's in HTTP, 
should be in HTTPS, but because we've done an ARP spoof and a man in the middle attack, you can see that it's in plain text over the wire and we can see and intercept that data. So if you look here in the raw file, it's a bit hard to see. So we've used all A's in capitals, just so you can see the password. And you can see the email there as well, test at snt.com and the, all the A's there, which is the password. So if it was real, we could use that for malicious purposes. So here in Wireshot, just for a more uniform look, so we can see the packets rather than looking in a raw file that SSL strips dumped into a file. Just, just to double check, these are the actual packets that Wireshark's captured. You can see the post data there, and that's what we're looking for. And you can see it down here at the bottom on Wireshark. So we can verify that this is the case. If, if SSL strip wasn't working, for example. So if we follow the TCP stream, we can look at this and we can find, use the finds uh, function and look for the password and the email, for example. There are tools like DSNF that can output this in a more user-friendly way. So if you were doing this on a large scale, you wanted to collect loads of user credentials, it would just output that in a really easy way for us to see as malicious attackers. Next part of the video is showing the mitigation to stop this attack and it's using HSTS in the HTTP header and that is strict transport security. Okay, I'm going to go to google.co.uk so I can show you the mitigation, um, the secure transport security in the developer tools on Google Chrome. Um, it doesn't show up until we go to the sign-in page in the header. Uh, I'll be showing you later, uh, later on in the video, using an Apache server, how we'll actually implement the strict transport security. I'll just demonstrate now where it will be in the headers. I'll click sign in here and it'll load the sign in page and go to the headers. And there it says the um, strict transport security is max age is set, which means you won't be able to SSL strip this. Okay, here we have an Apache web server set up uh, to see SSL strip in action. So I'm going to quickly go to the Apache 2 directory to show you uh, the configuration file. Here, as you can see, we have every, all the ports configuration sites enabled stored. So if I just open up the Apache 2 file, you can see everything is working well. Okay. So now I'm going to go to the sites enabled folder to open up the default SSL. Here are my virtual host configured. In the default SSL file, um, I'm a, a server name, server IP. Etc. And I also have my SSL engine on and my SSL certificate path, which has created a self signed certificate. Okay, so now to see the website, I have it, I have all the HTML pages saved in CD var www. And now let's open up Firefox and see my website. So now if I type in the IP, as you can see, I have a simple website set up with HTTPS all ready for SSL strip. And it is set up using a self-signed certificate with fake credentials. So here we're connecting to the Apache web server. Um, the index page does, uh, only uses HTTP. It's not necessary to use HTTPS there. Um, when we click there, um, it shows the error message. That's because of the self-signed certificate. Um, this page is using HTTPS so that we can protect the user credentials, and so is this page as well. So here we are on Kali. It's a slightly different setup to before. We don't have a default gateway in the sense it's connected to the internet. We've just got a switch with an Apache server, Kali Linux OS, and the Windows 7. Uh, it's connected to a routed switch. So it does have a default gateway, as you can see there on the right hand terminal. The default gateway is 192.168.0.20. Everything settled before like it was with the IP forwarding, SSL strip on listening on port 8080, and the SNT log file is there on the desktop, ready to capture passwords or any data that we find. We're using ARP spoof here, but it's slightly different to before. We're using hyphen R, which is a reverse host, which poisoned both hosts and the target so we capture traffic in both in both directions so 0 0.3 is the target and hyphen r is 0 0.1 uh, which is the ip of the apache web server so we're going to capture traffic in both directions between the windows server on 0 0.3 and 0 0.1 
and the, this bottom one here is like before you will recognize this it's hyphen t 0 0.3 and then the target is 0 0.3 obviously and the spoofing the gateway on 0 0.20 so we're saying to 0 0.3 that we're the default gateway the next one is like the top one that i just showed you on the first op spoof from the top terminal window on the top left uh, as you can see it's just reversed so hyphen 0 0.1 hyphen r 0 0.3 and that should capture traffic in both directions so this is us connecting to the win uh, the Apache web server again after the SSL strip and the ARP spoof have happened. Um, this time the HTTPS won't be shown. Um, if someone was tech savvy, they would look out for the HTTPS not being there, but not many people would think to look for that. Um, so it will recover the password in Kali Linux. The next part will be showing you that. So here we are in Kali. We're just going to show that the Apache website is vulnerable to the SSL strip. Again, you can see there we've already captured some traffic there. Just ignore that. This is the one we're looking for that we've just posted. Uh, Dalletsnt.com. Hello, SNT passwords captured in the clear with HTTP. So we've stripped the SSL off and forward HTTP to the user. As you can see, Dalletsnt.com there and hello pass SNT password, which is what we just posted. So here we are on the Apache web server. We're just going to show all the configs and the redirects and more importantly, our mitigation for the SSL strip attack, which is HSTS, which stands for HTTP Strict Transport Security. So here we are going to the var www file, just showing you again, ls minus a, just showing you the files that are in there. We've got the secure directory and the index file. Um, so we're going to open up the HT access file to show the redirect for HTTPS. So this bit, anything that's secure, secure directory, will load over HTTPS, as you can see there. This next part, anything that is not secure, the secure directory, will be HTTP, as you can see there. So the index file, for example, is loading over HTTP. We're just loading the login form to, to, to secure the users when they log in. So the next bit, I'm going to show you the default SSL file in the Apache configuration. And that's in the sites available folder, as we've previously seen. And this is where we're going to add the HSTS. Um, the way we do this is load it over the virtual host, which is on 443 and not port 80. 443 is the port for SSL. So you can see there, virtual host 443 and the IP address, which is 0 0.1. And we load the module called headers, which is just another module in Apache called headers. And this is the line of code. It's literally that and that forces the user agent the browser to load HTTPS strict transport security max age in seconds that equates to about two years so every time the user visits and that sees that header in HTTPS it sets it to that so the next stage is to use we're just going to show you the ARP tables just to show that it's actually working um, 6786 is the Carly Linux machine. So two is the IP it's on. That's that's correct. We don't want to see that. But as you can see there, three is at six seven eight six. We've spoofed Apache to think that the Windows Seven machine is at six seven eight six, and you can see it there. So the next stage is to show the HSTS and AD twelve. There, as you can see, is the router. And now I'm going to show you the Apache web server after the HSTS has been enabled. As you can see, HTTPS is there now due to the mitigation working. Uh, it says there in the response header that strict transport security is enabled. This is us in Kali Linux. As you can see from log file, SSL strip is working, but the username and password have not been captured because HSTS has been implemented.